over by himself. He's an awesome God. Amen. 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 Turn with us in your Bibles to the second epistle of Timothy. Timothy second. Paul's second letter to Timothy. Alright. Second Timothy chapter number two.
of fear. Now notice it, no, no what it said there, look. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. That don't mean that we cannot have the spirit of fear. It just means that the spirit of fear didn't come from God. You understand? There is an evil spirit that wants to put fear in all of us. Now, that evil spirit of fear is more than this uh, uh, fear just casually passing by our house. The spirit of fear comes in to dominate your life. When the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear wants to take control of who you are. The spirit of fear will care nothing about you being a Christian. The spirit of fear wants to cast evil upon you so that your knees are shaken. You have nightmares at night. You have bad dreams. You scared to go to sleep. You scared to wake up because you don't know what you're facing that day. That's what happens when the spirit of fear overtakes you. And the spirit of fear, I'm saying, does not come from God, but it is a real thing. Spirit of fear can cut you off. Yeah, yeah. The spirit of fear, when it overpowers your life, can make you isolate yourself. You become antisocial. Your family can't hardly get along with you. Nobody, you can't hardly get along with yourself. When the spirit of fear overtakes you, but God did not give us that spirit. But listen, that don't mean that it cannot overtake you, but there is something that comes from God that can overpower the spirit of fear. There are all sorts of evil. There's all sorts of evil spirits. Fear gives all of us the uneasy fear Man. That we're inactive. Fear wants to make us uncomfortable Man. living life. Yes, even the Christian life. Man. Fear casts doubts upon us when we want ourselves. We think we're inadequate, incapable huh? of performing our job. Fear sets off all sorts of false alarm. Fear, listen, fear will tell the marriage. Oh yes, oh yeah, oh yeah. Between a husband and a wife. Simply because fear creates illusions. Fear makes you think they ain't going on and they ain't really happening. Come on, somebody talk to me. That's what fear does. Fear, fear is simply a lack. Trust. Yes, yes, when it comes to our spiritual walk, fear is when, when, when the spirit of fear overtakes our life, it simply uh, keeps us from trusting in God. Yes, Saul got fearful. He got fearful because he saw this large enemy army All right. All right. surrounding his camp. And what fear did, and this is what fear desires to do, the spirit of fear for all of us, huh? it desires to take our eyes off God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Yeah, if the enemy can get us to not call on God today, yeah. you don't care nothing about you calling on God yesterday. Yeah. If the enemy can keep you from calling on God today, all right. if the enemy can, can get us so depressed if he get us so filled with doubt, he can even convince us, the spirit here can even convince us, even though we know that God has heard our cry, he can somehow convince us that God has taken his ear away from us today. As though God does not hear our cry. Well, fear is real. Yeah. Fear is Dangerous to a believer. Amen. When fear strikes, the first thing we ought to do as Christians uh, is to face our fear head on. Right. First thing we have to ask ourselves, I'm just, I'm just, fear 
and faith cannot coexist. Fear and faith cannot live in the same house. You know what fear and faith look like living in the same house? You ever been hollering a woman or a man hugging a wife that don't do nothing all the time? All right. All right. Because they can't get along. Fear and faith. If fear and faith get in the house, fear and faith will tell them how the faith can't get along with fear and fear can't get along with faith. Why? The faith ain't going to change. Fear ain't going to change.
and not fear. What we have to do is realize that the enemy knows who we are. The enemy knows how our relationship is with God. He knows the temperature, if you will, of that relationship. In other words, he knows when we're just playing church. And he knows when we're real with God. He knows who house to stop by. That grass is bold, he'll come right up and knock on your door. And try to open the door and get you to allow fear to come in. And what happened? The enemy uses fear to cast doubts upon Christians. And in these days that we're living in now, we know that doubt is no good. And when doubt creeps in our house, and what happens, our faith starts to erode. And we, what we used to trust in God to do two or three months ago, now what fear has caused us to do would take matters in our own hands. In other words, we used to say and mean that God is my provider. Yeah, the fear, fear is set in the camp now. And instead of saying and mean that God is my provider now, I'm standing in front of the lottery line. Oh, come on, talk to somebody. That's what fear do. Fear gets to creep in. Fear gets out and creep in. And you'll stop trusting in God. When we used to pray to God morning, noon, and night, down around these calling on God. Now fear is set in. Now I'm calling A. Jane. Tell A. Jane on my problem. A. Jane said, Baby, I can't help you, but God can. Call it on Cut Joe. Tell Cut Joe on my problem. Cut Joe said, Cut, I can't do you no good. You call on mommy, call on daddy. They're appointed to my rest with Jesus.
emerges in our life. Fear will be a problem by. It just proves that the devil is still alive. All right, all right, all right. That he's still loose upon this earth for a season. Oh, my God. 
Y'all see me through. Y'all see me through. Yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. God didn't give us that spirit. Right. Anything God didn't give us, we all not want it. We all not want it. Shut it down. Shut it out the door. Use the gifts, the powerful gifts that God has given us. There's no, nothing in this world that can overpower what God has given us. Amen. Trust God.
Get your bread out. Hopefully the self-examination has already taken place.
and they had counseling for, for, the, for the pandemic, but now they have, a, they have a tentative date for that men's conference again, so it's September the 9th, I think it is, I'll let you know, I think September the 9th in Sarasota, if all is well. It falls well. If they have to delay it again, they say, you know, they will. I think September 19th, September 19th in Sarasota. So I'll be letting you know uh, further information on that. Okay? All right. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Love everybody. Never faith is the answer, not fear. Faith is the answer. God bless you. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for taking care of us, providing for us, keeping us safe in the midst of all this uncertainty. We thank you, oh God. We ask that as we face this week, oh God, that you would continue to provide a hedge of protection around us. Not only us, but with all of your children everywhere. Protect our families, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we read of his Holy Spirit, rest and with us now and forever. May everybody say amen. Yeah. Say amen again. Yeah.